Bienvenidos. Welcome to the Learn Spanish con Salsa Podcast, the show for Spanish learners that love music, travel, and culture. Close your grammar textbooks, shut down the language apps, and open your ears to how Spanish is spoken in the real world. Let us show you how to go from beginner to bilingual. Here is your host, certified language coach, Tamara Marí. Hola y bienvenidos. Welcome to episode seven of the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. Have you ever tried listening to your local radio station that plays Latin music? Maybe you tried to listen to a few songs and just when you were starting to feel like you were getting the hang of listening to Spanish music and actually understanding some of it, in between songs, this host comes on and starts speaking super fast Spanish and you feel like you can't understand a word they're saying. If this has ever happened to you, you are not alone. Many Spanish learners report that it can be difficult to understand native Spanish speakers. The ability to understand spoken Spanish is a skill that you need to develop just like you learn grammar and vocabulary or any other part of the Spanish language. In this episode, we're going to talk about some ways that you can improve your Spanish listening skills with our guest, Shahida Foster. Shahida is the creator of Black Girls Learn Languages, a multi-platform digital community for Black women language enthusiasts, language learners, and linguistas, or women fluent in more than one language. Since launching in 2017, Black Girls Learn Languages has garnered a worldwide audience with more than 2,400 social media followers across multiple platforms, including a growing Facebook group with more than 500 members. Shahida is fluent in English and German and has also studied French and Spanish. She was a speaker at the first Women in Language event and was featured by Tandem as one of 12 amazing female language bloggers and vloggers. She's also an author at Boss Magazine, and that's spelled B-A-U-C-E. I hope that you enjoyed this conversation with Shahida and that you're ready to take notes on some ways that you can improve your Spanish listening skills right away. Vamos a empezar. Shahida, welcome to the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. Thank you so much for taking your time to join us today. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate that. Shahida, I came across you on social media, actually, because you run a site called Black Girls Learn Languages. So if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and why you decided to start Black Girls Learn Languages. I am originally from Brooklyn, New York, and that's very important because we all know that New York City is a melting pot. So I grew up hearing a lot of Spanish. I heard other languages too, but mostly Spanish. So um, ever since I was little, ever since I remember, I just was like, oh, I would love to learn how to speak Spanish. And, and you know, we don't have the resources we have today. So back then it was like, I'm going to watch Telemundo all week. And that's what I'm going <laughs> to do because I want to know Spanish. I want to speak Spanish. I think it's so cool. And then, you know, I'm going to watch Univision and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I would pick up a lot. I did pick up a lot of Spanish, but I wasn't able to practice with anybody, write, do these things that are very important. Fast forward to junior high school, high school, I studied French. And I liked studying French. Everybody else, they just kind of treated it like, oh, I'm just doing this so I could get my credits to graduate. But I actually enjoyed it. I enjoyed it so much, I kept a diary in French. And, and I also lived in Germany and during high school too. So I learned German and I liked language. And I, it was really hard for me because I would want to connect with people that looked like me. And it just seemed like I couldn't. Like, I remember... I went to a French club one time. I was like, oh, I think I'm going to join the French club. And I think I was the only black person there. And I was just like, so this is a little awkward because this is my first time. Because I'm from New York. So I'm used to being around, I guess you could say minorities, right? Even though we're not really the minority anymore, but that's another discussion. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm used to being around black people. I'm used to being around Latin people. I'm used to being around Asian people. Like I, I, I wasn't really a lot of like white people in the schools that I went to. So it was very like, okay, I don't know how to relate to these people. I'm coming to this French club, so I'm going to try it. And it was just, it was very hard. It was a shock because it's like, 
it was it was clear that these people weren't really able to relate to me either so I quit the French club, but I just was like, I know there's gotta be people like that, like me, like that looks like me. And we could laugh and kiki about, you know, all these language problems and stuff, you know, and just kind of connect on that. But I just didn't know where. So I just, you know, that's always been in the back of my mind. Like, you know, I'm, I, I love to have these conversations, but I would really love it with somebody who looks like me, who is my culture, who understands and we could laugh. And so flash forward to last year, a couple of years ago, I was working with a language consultant. I mean, not a language consultant, a consultant and language came up in the conversation. And she said, you know, maybe you should do something with that. And I was like, no, I'm not doing that. Then um, <laughs> I thought about it and I was like, you know what? I still don't see this community. Like I still don't see a community for black women learning languages, knowing languages, whatever. So I'm just going to create it and I'm just going to see where it goes. When I started, it was five people, like five followers, you know. And then I remember when I started, I finally decided, you know what? It's nice to have Instagram and all that. It's nice to have Twitter. But I want to have a conversation. Like, I want to be able to continue to talk to you. So I started the group on Facebook. And I remember when it seemed like I was talking to myself. I, I, at one point, I was like, I'm not going to even post anymore. Like, I'm done. And then slowly, like, I have people who regularly comment. They post their own resources and stuff. And um, so that's basically just the story of how I got to this point. So I wanted to create that community I didn't see. And I'm so glad that I did because I've met people because of Black Girls Learn Languages in, in real life. And, you know, I've met some amazing people. So I'm very glad that I did this. I'm glad that you did it, too, because I actually I've met some people through your group, too. And I don't even know how I came across it. I think someone added me. I'm not sure. Um, but I've met so many cool people in the group and hearing different conversations, because like you mentioned, culture is really important to learning languages. And I talk about that a lot on this podcast, that you really can't learn language in a vacuum. You really need to connect with the people that speak the language. And it's really hard to do that if you don't know anything about the people um, and also, if you don't have people that look like you, like you mentioned, um, I think it's really interesting that one of the things uh, for me as well that stood out when I was learning Spanish was having a community of people that also are into language learning because, you know, your friends aren't always going to be into like, oh, how do you um, learn this new Spanish grammar thing? Or like, what? <laughs> how do you improve your accent, <laughs> right? Like my most of my friends weren't really into that until I started connecting with other people in a language learning community um, and really being able to have those conversations like you talked about. So yeah, I'm really glad that you started too. And I think that's great because sometimes we can be reluctant to start something, but when you see a real need and you start that and you really start to get the feedback and see people participating, that can be really rewarding. What I wanted to talk to you about Shahida is a little bit about something I actually saw you post on Instagram uh, with Black Girls Learn Languages because sometimes you also share your own language learning journey. Um, and I know that right now you are learning Spanish. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about a really common issue that a lot of people, a lot of the clients and folks I work with who are learning Spanish struggle with. And that's improving your ability to really understand Spanish when spoken. So a lot of English speakers learning Spanish they are really good at reading it, right? Or at least they think they are. It's another story. <laughs> but they recognize words more when they see them. But if somebody walks into the room, like a native speaker, and reads the exact same words they just read, they wouldn't understand it. So it's a real problem, I think, with especially English speakers in particular, but it's a real issue with learning the Spanish language. So can you tell us a little bit about some of the things you've done to help improve your Spanish listening comprehension and some of the strategies that you've used so far? Yeah, listening comprehension is is the bane of my existence, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I have to admit that. I, I Even when I was learning French, I got really good, but it was struggling because I learned French in a classroom setting and it wasn't an immersive classroom setting. Because I learned German on my own, I was totally in full control of that. I decided, you know what, I'm going to take with the Spanish that I know and I'm going to, you know, take control of this and take it to the next level. And I know that listening comprehension is hard for a lot of people and it, but it is, it's also key to gaining that fluency, that level of fluency. So things that have helped me is one of the things is 
understanding it a little bit better because it's beyond just the superficial okay my listening comprehension is bad it's like it's not that your listening comprehension is bad it's just it's it's that's the starting point it's going to get better so first thing is i would say is we, we definitely need to change our mindset and reframe the things that we're saying for instance one of the things people always tend to say is, oh, I can't understand them. they talk so fast. And it's like, actually, they're not talking fast. They're talking the normal speed that people in that language or any language speak. They, they, they're normally talking. It's just that because there's a lot of things at play, such as like connected speech, what I learned as liaisons in French class. There's a lot of uh, linking and connected speech. So it sounds like they're speaking quickly, but it's just you learn the words isolated in, in robotic and choppy. And so that's what you're listening for, but that's not natural speech. And so knowing that, that's gonna get you okay. So the problem is not that they're talking fast. The problem is the way that I'm learning how to listen. You're not learning how to listen, what to listen for. You're learning, this is the word, this is what it sounds like stand alone. But people don't just say words randomly stand alone. It's a sentence, you know? So that's one thing that I have gotten myself. I, I stopped saying like, oh, French people speak so quickly. It's like, no, I, you know, I'm not used to the way they speak. I need to get used to it. Because when you say that, oh, they speak so quickly, you automatically, your mind, your pre-conscious is saying, it's, it's like telling you, you're, you're not going to be able to do that. So you don't want to do that. You want to say, I'm not used to it. I need to get used to it. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is you need to learn what things sound like in normal speech patterns and so for instance i was watching celia which i'm addicted to and i'm very upset because i wanted to binge this weekend i didn't have an opportunity but oh, no. yeah i will confess i also binge watch like i think it's 80 episodes of that show i was definitely <laughs> yes. addictive so yes i've been through that binge watching with celia too and if if anyone doesn't know what she's referring to so there's a a telenovela or soap opera in it's on netflix now i believe it started out on telemundo and it's about the singer Celia Cruz, who's from Cuba. So it's a really dramatic but very interesting story about her life and the history and culture of Cuba and the music. So it's really just um, a really fun show to watch. But yeah, but I ho hopefully you get a chance to binge watch it soon. <laughs> it's a great show. Right, because if it's still on when this episode airs, watch it. Because we all know that Netflix does not keep the licensing forever. So who knows how long it's going to be on there. So if it's on there, get it, watch it while you can but yeah, like I was watching it and I was thinking to myself, oh my goodness, is this a Cuban accent? I can't do this. Because I never really talked to Cubans before. Like I've heard Puerto Ricans talking. I've heard Mexican people talking. I've even heard people from Spain talking, but I never really listened to Cubans. So I'm listening to this like, oh wow. And I had to put Spanish subtitles on because I'm like, I don't understand. And, you know, as I'm looking at the words and, you know, listening to how they're speaking them out, I'm like, oh, they're saying it completely different than how I expect to hear it. Right, so, right. So, you know, and that's something I did in German as well. Like when I was learning German, um, I will watch TV in German and I will put the German subtitles on because I'm like, why well, don't I understand anything? And then I'm reading it like, oh, that's how the word sounds when you're saying in a sentence in between sandwich, in between other words. Okay. Because... If you're saying one word one way, just by itself, it sounds completely different than when you're saying it in a sentence. Yeah, and I mean, we do it with English too. I think we just don't realize it because it's our native language. But, you know, if you want to ask someone how they're doing, you're not going to say, how are you, right? It would sound really crazy. We're like, how are you? And it sounds like one word, but we hear it as three different words because we're used to it. So I think that you're right. It's definitely a mindset thing. And if we tell ourselves it's going to be hard or that it's too fast, then it's already going to set us up for failure. So um, you mentioned one thing I wanted to ask about because you, you talked about watching German shows with German subtitles and watching Spanish shows with Spanish subtitles. And I've heard some people recommend watching with English subtitles. So just kind of give us some insight on why you choose to do it that way instead of um, using subtitles in English and how that helps you with your listening comprehension. Well, I think it's nothing wrong with watching it with English subtitles because I did also do that too. But once you get to a certain level and you'll know this within yourself, like once you get to a certain level where you're like, I'm good on that, you can go ahead 
<laughs> and put it in the native language one because you know I think it's a good starting point I also did that as well like because um, MTV in Germany at the time because it may be different now but at the time they showed English speaking shows and they showed German speaking shows so sometimes they would have no subtitles sometimes they did sometimes it would be like they had um Oh my God, the Osbournes. This is old. I'm dating myself. But they had the <laughs> Osbournes and like it would be German subtitles. So I would watch it in English. I understand everything, mostly. And then read the subtitles like, oh, that's what that word means in German. Oh, okay, that's how you use it, whatever. And vice versa. They may have a German show and it may have English subtitles. And then I would say, oh, okay, that's how you say that phrase. And so it's nothing wrong with that. But I just feel like I'm kind of beyond that at this point. Like, I don't want to be doing that. Like, I'm trying to take my stuff to a next level. And the next level for me is understanding natural speech. Like, just understanding it. And the key to that is knowing what to listen for. And like I noticed in the, in the uh, in Celia, I noticed that a lot of people aren't really saying, like, certain sounds so of course like for instance i noticed like they said like the word explicar and i noticed they sound like they sound like explicar like there's no x sound or like where her father was saying like respect is the most important thing he was like el, el respeto like not respecto but you know what i mean yeah so it's Cubans like, uh, tend not to pronounce the letter s a lot so yeah a lot of <laughs> A lot of words just the S disappears and they, they say like they swallow it, right? It's like they're eating the S's, they they don't pronounce them. So yeah, that's pretty uh pretty characteristic of the Cuban accent. <laughs> but the thing is, if you don't know this, then of course you're sitting there like I don't know right. what I'm hearing. So it's like you kind of have to know what you're hearing. Another thing that I do encourage, and I and I don't know if anybody does this, but I do encourage is I do also encourage talking to someone who's not a native speaker, but a little more advanced than you and maybe listening to them and interacting with them. I feel like that's a good bridge to getting from, because we tend to understand non-native speakers better at first. So that's also a good bridge. Like if you can find someone that's like, like let's say you're a beginner, right? You're a beginner. And you can find someone that's at least an advanced beginner, intermediate, advanced, intermediate, whatever. And they're not native. You can talk to them. You're going to be able to understand them because they're not going to talk. They're going to speak and you're going to be able to catch that speech linking because they're going to be, you know, not native fluent. So they may not, their flow may not match a native's flow. And so you may be able to catch that speech linking like, oh, that's what it sounds like. Oh, that's what it sounds like when you say that word. That's what it sounds like in a full sentence. That's what it sounds like after this word. And you will get the hang of it. I feel like that's a good, like the training wheels to begin talking to native speakers if you don't feel comfortable and if you want to start to understand what you're trying to listen for. Yeah, I like that idea. It's actually a good bridge because I think sometimes we assume we have to just jump in and, you know, a lot of people in the language learning community say you have to talk to native speakers. But if you don't understand anything, it can be really demotivating and demoralizing if you're trying to have a conversation. You're like, I didn't catch any of that. So I like that idea, like talking to someone whose level is a little bit higher than yours so you can at least get the hang of hearing spoken Spanish and then like you said, kind of use it as training wheels. And once you get better and better at that, then you can kind of make that jump to listening to more native speech at more of a regular pace. So you can start to get used to that too. So is there anything else that you've been doing as you've been working on what you call the bane of your existence? <laughs> Where, you know, you're um, improving your Spanish listening. Yes. I actually, it's so crazy because like, I'm actually was going to do a video on this. So another thing that I will have to say in listening, I personally believe that if you can, video is better than audio alone. I just find that because one of the things that I was doing was I subscribed to a podcast for kids like Sesame Street or whatever in Spanish. One thing I don't like to do is I don't like to watch exported entertainment and when I say exported entertainment I mean shows that are like they're dubbed in Spanish or you know they're originally in English or they're originally Italian I don't like to do that I like to get the content 
already originally created in that language because I just feel like you don't have to worry about learning something incorrectly because sometimes the translations are completely wrong. They're just really right. wrong. Yeah, that's a so, big problem. <laughs> I, I highly encourage original content in the original target language, not exported contact that's been dubbed over. But anyway, I digress. What I want to say was I was watching, I was listening to the podcast and another thing is repetition. So for instance, if I'm watching the podcast and I only understand, let's say 40% of it, and then I watch it again, and then I understand 50%, and then I watch it again, and then I understand 80%, like I'll keep watching until I pretty much understood what they said. Like, I feel comfortable enough to know, okay, I didn't really miss that much, that many words, and then I'll go on to the next thing because repetition is a huge part of learning language. So if I'm watching it, well, I was listening to it, and I was listening to it over and over, but there was a lot of stuff that I was missing. And so one day I was like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna watch it while I'm getting ready for work. So I turned it on, it's Sesame Street, in Spanish, like not dubbed over. It's actually made in Spanish. The characters are speaking Spanish. So I was watching it while I was doing my makeup. I'm watching it. And I'm like, I went from understanding 20% of what was going on to understanding like 60% of what was going on just because there's body language that goes with it. You can look at the, the mouth, the way the mouth is moving when they're talking, the context of what's going on, like all of that goes into language and people don't realize that like that's a huge part of language because I was like thinking like I don't really understand like what's going on with this but you know so that's why I highly recommend if you can as much video as you can take in please take it in cool that's a really good suggestion as well because I think that um, like you mentioned being able to see how someone's mouth moves um, I think it also really help you with your pronunciation as well, because I think a lot of times when we hear something that a native speaker says, and then we try to say it, we might go, wait, why don't I sound like them? Right. Like, especially like, <laughs> if, like a quick example is like when we say like a uh, super American, I'm gonna use my super American accent and say like, hola. Right. We're like, why doesn't it sound like it sounds different when they say it? And it sounds like hola. It's because your tongue is in a completely different place right? When right. you're saying that L sound and you won't notice that unless you see someone actually pronouncing the word, you can kind of see their mouth is open more. You can see their tongue is behind their teeth instead of like in English, we kind of have a more lazy like hola, right? <laughs> so <laughs> you can also start to pick up on things with video I, that will help your pronunciation, I think. So those were some good tips you gave us. You first talked about mindset, making sure you don't overwhelm yourself by thinking this is going to be hard or too fast. You talked about watching shows with subtitles in in Spanish and not in English. They really help you take your listening to the next level. You also talked about talking to a, not a native Spanish speaker, right? But talking to an English speaker who may be a little bit more advanced than you so that you can really start to understand some of those natural speech patterns and also watching video and using that repetition to really see how much you can understand and I think you're right. You'll find the more and more you listen and repeat, you'll understand more and more every time. So thank you so much for sharing that advice. I hope that will help our audience who's working on listening comprehension to really kind of get over that hump to where you're just sitting there going, oh, it's too hard. I don't understand anything that they're saying to giving it a shot, trying some of the tips that Shahida gave us today and seeing if you can apply it to your learning. And also, Shahida, I want to link in the show notes the video that you just talked about. So I'll definitely put that in the show notes so anyone who's listening can check out her video where she goes into more detail about how to improve your listening comprehension. Okay, so now I want to switch over to do our quick fire round in Spanish. So this is our segment where we ask five quick questions in Spanish and we get your answers off the top of your head, you know, to give you an opportunity to practice your Spanish as well and to give our audience an opportunity to listen to some Spanish. So Shahida, eh, ¿lista? No. no. (laughs) (laughs) That's okay, let's do it. (laughs) Okay, ¿lista? No, okay. (laughs) So tenemos cinco preguntas en español. Okay, y la primera es, ¿cuál fue la última cosa que leíste, miraste o escuchaste en español? La última cosa fue podcast de Sesame Street. La segunda pregunta, ¿cuál es tu canción favorita en español? Uh, una buena pregunta. 
mi canción favorita en español es de Selena Baila esta cumbia. Ah, baila esta cumbia. <ríe> Selena es muy popular. <ríe> sí. Es. Y número tres, ¿cuál es tu palabra favorita de español? Estrañar. Y número cuatro, ok. okay. Saca tu teléfono uh -huh. y traduce para nosotros el último texto que recibiste al español. Ok, un momentito. Recibí un, un mensaje de mi prima. Dice, voy a volver pronto. Estoy a Pep Boys. <risa> <risa> Qué bueno. Y la última pregunta. Esa es un, una pregunta al azar. So, it's a random question. Si tuvieras música de presentación, ¿qué canción sería y por qué? Pienso, pienso, pienso. De Remy Martin, Conceited. <laughs> Qué interesante. <laughs> ok, gracias, Shahira. Gracias por participar. Thanks for participating in our quick fire round. Um, I hope that was a little bit of fun for you. Gave you a chance to practice your Spanish as well. So yes, I, it did. So um, to wrap things up, do you have any uh, projects coming up or just kind of let folks know how to follow you on social media and where they can get in touch with you? I want to have a language event for Black women. So I don't have the dates yet, but just look out for that. Other than that, you can follow me. I am heavily on Instagram at Black Girls Learn Languages. I'm occasionally on Twitter saying things that I just feel like saying. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Twitter is at Black Lingu Linguistas. Also, I have the Facebook group. I guess you could leave the link in the show notes. But I'm definitely in there posting all kinds of stuff, memes, you know, resources, asking questions, just interacting. And But, I mean, we talk about things, you know, that's not just language. That's just about being a Black woman in this world. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Shahida. I'm going to let you run. I know you're a busy woman. Thank you so much for having me. That is it for this episode of Learn Spanish con Salsa. Now, if you're looking for more ways that you can improve your Spanish listening skills, check out the free course, the five-day Spanish ear training at learnspanishconsalsa.com forward slash ear training. That's LearnSpanishConSalsa.com forward slash ear training. And you can sign up for a free five-day course that will give you daily lessons on how to improve your Spanish listening comprehension. In just under a week, you will be surprised at how much better you're able to understand spoken Spanish. For links to all the resources we talked about in this episode, as well as a full transcript, go to the show notes page at LearnSpanishConSalsa.com forward slash seven. That's LearnSpanishConSalsa.com forward slash seven or episode seven of the podcast. If this is your first time listening to the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast and you're not already subscribed, make sure you go ahead and click the subscribe button. You'll be notified of all of our new content as soon as it's made available. And as always, we love to hear your feedback. You can follow us on Instagram at Learn Spanish Con Salsa or join our Facebook group at SpanishMusicAndCulture.com. I hope you heard something in this episode that will take you one step closer from being a beginner to bilingual. Hasta luego. Thank you for listening to the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast at LearnSpanishConSalsa.com.